trigonometry has two parts to its word that hints to what it's about, tri and metry. And what these ultimately mean is, in this case, tri means triangle. So triangles and metry means measure. So ultimately, uh, we are going to learn through trigonometry how to find the measures of a triangle which is both finding angles, but also sides. This is the very first time we're going to learn a way to interact between angle size and sides. So we have something like the Pythagorean theorem that's only about sides, and we have things about adding angles and angle values, but we have nothing that puts them together. And so this guy is going to teach us how to connect angle size to sides and side lengths. Trigonometry is awesome stuff. So to be able to organize ourselves using trigonometry, we actually have to label sides with certain um, names and, and relationships. So the first is the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is an easy one in a triangle. It is always, of course, in a right triangle, but it's the one that is opposite the right triangle. So what we mean by opposite, so here's our right triangle. Opposite is on the opposite side of the triangle. It's also always going to be the longest side in a right triangle. And so the hypotenuse is a fairly easy thing to label. Now, the other names are kind of relative as to what we call the reference angle. And so let's look at that. The opposite leg, actually, you know what? Um, yeah, let's do the opposite. The leg that does not form the reference angle. So one of the things that is important about naming sides is this idea of a referencing angle. So here and here are our referencing angles. And what it says is the opposite leg is the leg of the triangle that does not form that angle. So that would make the opposite side over here. And in this case, the opposite side would be over here. The adjacent leg is maybe the one I should have started with first, is the one that does form the, as a part of the forming of the um, referencing angle. And so we see that that is the adjacent side in these positions. Let me give you an easy way to remember who goes where. I make an angle around the reference angle and you will always touch the adjacent side, and you will always touch the hypotenuse. So between these two, you'll always get one adjacent side and one hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is the longer. So in this other example, here's the referencing angle up here in this corner, and you'll notice that, um, that A and H are the ones that form that angle. So what I do is I always go to the reference angle, make an arc, and that's how I get A and H, and then O is always the one that's not a part of that. So let me demonstrate the proper labeling. So this says the reference angle is at R, so let's mark that as our reference angle. I then make a little arc at this stage, and it always touches the adjacent and the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longer side, so that's going to be this one here. And that also makes it quite easy to know who the opposite is. So in this case, our adjacent um, is GR, GR. Our hypotenuse is TR or RT, doesn't matter. And our opposite is G to T. In the next case, um, we have a reference angle of M. So this is our M, then let's make an arc here. That would touch the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longer one, thus making this the opposite side. So the opposite side in this case is GH, and our adjacent side is MG, and our hypotenuse is MH. Now again, the labeling of these is so critical because we're going to create ratios and we're going to use these names to help us out. So to give us an example, um, here is a triangle that's got a 3, 4, 5. It's a right triangle. And here is our referencing angle. So H would be the 5, 4 would be our adjacent, and 3 would be our opposite. So if they asked us to find the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, in our case, that would be 3 compared to the 5. If they asked for the opposite compared to the adjacent, 
opposite would be 3 and adjacent would be 4. In this example we see the referencing angle in this corner which makes this the adjacent and this the hypotenuse and this the opposite. Again that will always touch the adjacent and the hypotenuse not the opposite side. And so if we were to be doing some of this, if we were doing adjacent to the hypotenuse, the adjacent would be the 8 and the hypotenuse would be 17. In this case, if we were doing the opposite side to the adjacent, it would be 8 as to 15. We're getting you ready uh, by setting up ratios and then soon that's going to connect to angle size as well. It is at this point that usually in the class we do an activity and the way the activity goes is I divide the class into three different groups and I ask each group one to label their triangle based on the new labeling to measure each side and then to find certain ratios so uh, my smallest triangle group would basically um, calculate uh, each of these sides with a ruler to find out what they are so using our labeling technique, this is our H, this is our A, and this is our O. And uh, I'm going to just rough in approximately what I found. I found that this was 13. I found that this was about 22, and this was about 26. So we'll come to that in a second. My next group would uh, do the same type of a thing, but they would um, measure theirs. And so they would measure... Um, this guy and this guy and this guy as well and um, in doing so they would find this of course is their adjacent their hypotenuse and their opposite and approximately those values I found to be 27 for this uh, 48 and 55 to be their values and then uh, the final guy, they would also do the same measuring, but of theirs. Uh, and they would do this guy, and this guy, and this guy as well. They would use their technique to say that this is their hypotenuse adjacent and op opposite. And these values uh, came to be 44, um, 75, and a, an 87. Now, why, why are we doing this? So each group measures their own. And part of what I want to test is what can we expect about these ratios? Now, I want you to notice something. These guys are all 30 degree right triangles. And I'm hoping that you know a little bit about uh, what's going to happen here. So let me put these aside for a minute now. So watch what happens here, you guys. These are my measurements that I have. These are the measurements of each of them. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three ratios. I'm going to create uh, a ratio in the little guy between the opposite to the hypotenuse, in the medium, and in the high. And I'm going to do the same for adjacent to hypotenuse and so on. And then I'm going to do it one more time for the opposite and the adjacent. Let's look at what we find in their groups. So when I did the opposite to hypotenuse in the little one, I got about 50. When I did opposite to hypotenuse, I got very close to 50. When I did opposite to hypotenuse, I got very close to 50. Now what I need you to notice, and this is important, is basically we got the same value in each case. And why is it different? Well, when you measure with the ruler, you're going to have a little uh, air in there. But basically, we are getting the same value for this guy as we did for this guy and as we did for this guy. Now I'm hoping that you recognize that all three of those triangles were similar triangles because they were all 30 90 degree right triangles. Let's look at the second case. This group came out at about 0 0.85, 0 0.87, 0 0.87, or 0.86. So again, very similar values. Let's look at this ratio. 0 0.59, 0 0.56, 0 0.58. Again, we are getting very, very similar each time uh, in terms of our values. So these all were very close. Uh, these were all very close. And what does that all mean to us? What does this all mean? So let's slide this guy up. What it means 
is that when you're in a 30 degree uh, right triangle, if you compare the opposite to the hypotenuse, you're going to get a number around 0.5. Now, we're going to find out if that's the value, but that's close to what we got the three times. We also know if you compare the adjacent to the hypotenuse, you're going to get a number around 0.86. And if you compare the opposite side to the adjacent side, no matter how big or small, you're going to get about 0.58. So we're connecting a 30 degree ratio, a 30 degree angle to three brand new ratios. Now these ratios get a name. This guy is called the sine ratio. And that's like just his name, uh, like Fred or George, we call the sine ratio is always a comparison opposite to hypotenuse. This guy is called the cosine ratio and is always a comparison of adjacent to hypotenuse. And this guy is called the tangent ratio, and it is a comparison of, a, of the opposite to the adjacent side. So let's take a look at these three numbers that we found and connect it to some big ideas. So by measurement, we found out in the little guy, the sine ratio of the 30 degree right triangle came out to be 0.5. In the medium guy, or in all of them, when we did cosine ratio, which is adjacent to hypotenuse, we were getting about 0.86. And when we did the tangent ratio of a 30 degree right triangle, we got about 0.58. Now what you're looking at below is called a trig table. And what it is, is it provides us with all of those values. So let's see how we did. Here is, uh, and so the columns are sine, cosine, and tangent. So look at our numbers, how we did. We said that um, we got uh, 0.5, so we did real good. We got 0.86, so that's quite close to the actual. And then we got 0.58, which is also very close. So now you're asking, what is this big chart? So you and I did the measurements of just a 30 degree uh, triangle. So we just did the 30. What, what these are is all of the ratios for all of the triangles. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. If I was to draw a triangle like this one right here and tell you that this was 22 degrees, well, I know that this would be my adjacent and my hypotenuse and my opposite. And if I wanted to know the ratio between opposite to hypotenuse, which happens to be the sine ratio, the sine ratio of 22 degrees, I could go find that and it would be right here. So 0.3746. That's the exact ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. And I don't even need to know anything other than that because all I know is that because of similarity, because this guy right here, if I made it bigger or smaller, it wouldn't change the ratio. So do you see how we're connecting similar triangles to that idea, whether it was a little one or a big one or a really big one, it gave us the same ratios every time. So another example of that might be, let's come on over here and make another guy. So let's say I drew any old uh, triangle here and that this angle happens to be 71 degrees. Well, if that's my referencing angle, this is the adjacent, this is the hypotenuse, this is the opposite. And if I would like to know the relationship between the opposite to the adjacent, that's called the tangent ratio of a 71 degree angle is the opposite compared to its adjacent. And that's something you and I can look up. That is sitting right here. 2.904 and that would be exactly this ratio between these two sides. So do you see the power of what's happening here is that we are gaining an understanding of the relationships that are going on in similar triangles and it relates, it's going to relate an angle. So again, if I say, well, if I'm in a 50 degree angle, here I am, this provides me with the opposite to hypotenuse ratio. This provides me the adjacent to hypotenuse ratio. And this provides me the 
um, opposite over adjacent ratio. And why could I say that, even though I have not even drawn that triangle? And the answer is similarity. Because whenever I make a 50 degree right triangle, it doesn't matter whether I made it this big or this big. If it's a 50 degree right triangle, the ratio of those sides will all be the same proportionality. Do you see how trigonometry is connecting an angle size to information about sides? Very, very powerful.